This is so exciting and such a great episode. Season 5, Episode 9, Portrait Artist of the Year. Let's get started. Before we get started, if you'd leave a thumbs up, YouTube loves that, and please subscribe. Now, let's look at our winners so far. Three of these people are going to go on to the semifinals, and it's been nine, eight episodes to get here. This is the ninth, so they're going to be eight participants. Let's take a look at the first one. Now, remember, they had to do a self-portrait in order to be selected. So here is each one of the contestants with their self-portrait, and they are going to paint one model today in four hours. And then three of them will be selected to go on to the semifinals. In the semifinals, they will be painting uh, Laura Linney, an actress, and they will each do individual commissions that are assigned to them. And then they will, from that, only one winner will be chosen, with the final prize being to paint Mr. Tom Jones, the pop star. So there's a lot at stake. And I looked at the application, and I'm going to talk about that at a different time, because these people are really put under tremendous pressure. I had no idea. It's fun to see each one of these people again. They did not show the portraits that they did that won each one of their episodes, which is kind of strange. They showed them once far away in the background, and in my future recaps, I will keep track of that, because what I want to do in the future when we get to this fi semi-final episode is I want to be able to show not only the self-portraits which we're showing right now but also which painting won their particular episode and then we can get to which painting they do today as well as which painting then they are uh, used in the selection of the final three because I kind of want to remember the history of all these people. And in the end, it's a lot of painters to keep track of. And these are all excellent contestants. And so that's part of what makes this episode a real delight. So our model for today is Courtney Pine. Courtney Pine is a jazz star. And he brought his saxophone with him. And so unlike other episodes, we only have one model and each artist will be painting the same model at the exact same time with cameras on them. And I mean, the pressure, the pressure is, is so extreme, but it's going to be, it's going to be a great program. After four hours, the artists turn their easels around and the, uh, and Courtney will pick one of these paintings to go home, which has nothing to do with the final judging. In the very far distance, you can see the paintings that they did that won each one of their heats. See how far away it is? I could get a shot so that we could use them today to remember, but in the future, I'll keep track of that. Here is the first one up. Every one of these paintings is going to be fantastic, so I'm not judging what's, what's good or bad, but let's look at the differences in terms of style. A lot of color being used here, and a lot of brush stroking as well. And there's a lot of technique, too. There's blending as well as applying patches of paint. They've allowed the paint to drip. It shows a lot of technique and a lot of control. So very beautifully done. Here's a close-up where we can get a better look at where some of those decisions were made in terms of finding the planes of the face and then assigning a color to those planes. I just think it's, it's, it's strong. It's not just sensitively done, but it's extremely strong and not static. It doesn't look like a, a photograph. You know, sometimes you have to ask yourself, why, why, why have painters at all? Well, because they can make decisions that make images look more um, interpretive than photography. That's not really true, but it's different. All right, here's the second participant. If you watch any of my programs, you know this is the type of painting that I love the most. When someone uses value shapes and assigns color to each one of those shapes, puts those shapes near each other, and what will happen is that uh, forms will be made just simply from that. See how all the different uh, shapes and those shapes, he, there's very little blending going on here. The shape is assigned and a brush stroke is made, and then a different shape is assigned, and a brush stroke is made, all based on the value 
meaning the, the lightness or darkness of what is happening from observation. And in order to pump things up, there have been some color value swap outs very far in the back and also on the shirt where both red and blue have been inserted to add more uh, color and texture. This person is a real colorist. I really enjoyed watching her in the program. What I mean by colorist is that she, it's almost a complete color value swap out in terms of very little flesh tone being used here, but it, it, it absolutely works because the values are correct. And that it is a pretty interpretive painting because this is a jazz musician. And don't you feel like there's music in the background? Don't you feel like she's found some, there's a rhythm. Rhythm in painting is an interesting subject. Uh, not to have just your concentration on the image of what you want your audience to look at, meaning the, this particular figure, but but rhythm in terms of how it uh, how your eye plays across the the plane of the entire painting. Where does it stop? Where does it start? Where's a resting place? Where's a more active place? And I think she is very interesting and in. in her choices there. In the wrong hands, this could be a real mess. But she 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 did a she did an excellent job. I, I find this a really exciting piece. Next up is this one. This is very different from the one we just saw. This person is not really a colorist. They're kind of what I call more a matchy matchy painter, trying to match what they see in front of them with the colors on their palette. Nothing wrong with that. Just um a different style than I love, but beautifully done. And here as well, they're trying to convey some texture and motion in the background. The actual figure itself is much more static than the one that we just saw. Here's a close-up. Not, I, I'm, I'm dying to put a little bit of, of blue in there. Oh gosh, he's put blue in his mixes. That's happened, but I would like to see uh, some patches of light blue right right in the corner of the eyes and behind. Boy, that would really help. But but I'm being very picky here. It's a beautiful painting. Now we, it's really important that we see it from far away because the final commission will be on a gallery wall. And so the painting has to have some weight and some gravitas. And I think it does from far away, beautifully done. Uh, not a very large piece, but again, in only four hours, I think you, you sort of have to be smart about what your format is, what you're going to pick. All right, here's the next one. This also is not by, done by a colorist, but something about this is, uh, oh boy, really exciting. I think it has to do with uh, this particular artist really using their brush as if it was a pencil, as if they almost don't feel like they painted it as much as they drew it with color. It's beautifully done and from far away, beautifully done as well. Uh, very muted palette, which is probably really appropriate for a final commission. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but the final commission is a portrait of Tom Jones, the pop star. So uh, just want to keep that in mind a little bit. You know, he's, he's very flamboyant, but, uh, but you know, you have to adjust your palette to what your commission is. This is the next one up, and this person was not able to finish. If I remember correctly, this particular artist was never ever, ever, ever able to finish and also didn't finish her self-portrait where she had all the time uh, in the world. But, uh, but let's judge what she did. And what she did is it's, it's beautiful, really beautifully done. Uh, not as generous with paint application as maybe some of the other ones, but that's this particular person's style. Yeah, she has this particular style, yeah, when we come back, where she leaves a lot of the white of the paper white and puts pattern in the back. So I get it. I get what she's doing here. She also has tried to match her colors to what she saw in front of her, which is, um, you know, the way, what some, some people like to do. I prefer some uh, swap outs. All right, here's the next one. This one, this one, the editing tricked me because you could, they hardly show this artist and they only showed in the end maybe two images of what they did today. And I thought, well, wait, they're not going to pick her because they are not really showing her. And I've already given it away because you already know from what I've just said that they, she picked there, she's picked this one as a finalist, which... Oh boy. Anyway, very much surprised me. But I did watch this program 
Oh, and we've pulled back, so let's look at it from far away. Nice job. But um, there we go. Oh, I did not listen to the program. I've kind of gotten the, the mode now where I don't listen to the judges. I watch it with the sound off. Makes me happier. <laughs> it's all about me. <laughs> anyway, here's the next one. I love this one. I don't even know why I love this one. I guess because it's so, it just says, I'm a painter. You know, here's the paint. I'm going to let it do the work for me. Look at the green along the shoulder. Beautifully done. Purple on the left. Not afraid of color at all. Was able to find, able to use color value to find, to uh, find and establish that shine that the saxophone would have. And here's the last one, which is a very fragmented image. And each one of the his self-portrait as well as what he did to win his particular episode as well as today this is what he does he does this fragmented thing and i know the judges are looking for something different something they haven't seen before and i have a feeling this is going to fit their brief this is what they want so um and i'm not opposed to that that's fine but i suspect that uh that they're going to be weighted i think he's going to be a finalist but we'll find out very very shortly here we come in closer with a detail. Very fine, very very nicely done. Uh, I wonder where his fragmented style comes from. I don't know. It's interesting, but could become, in my mind, I don't know that I'd want to go to a show which had paintings all in this particular fragmented style thing. You know, it's um, it could get old. Hard to tell. All right, Courtney has a pick to make. And this painting is the one that goes home with him. And that's an honor just in itself. So let's see which one he picks. I had no idea. And boy, I had a guess, but I was way wrong. This is when he chose. And it's kind of cool because it, it reflects jazz a little bit, don't you think? Jazz can have really harmonious chords and then it have, can have something discordant in it. And I don't know. Almost looks like musical notes in a way. All right, the final judging. Well, the final judging, they're going to pick three people who go on to the semifinals. And it's so exciting, and I'm so happy for all of them. Here are, th uh, these are not the people that win, but here are their, here are all the paintings lined up that they're going to choose from. And, you know, you could roll a dice and, and, and pick any three, as far as I'm concerned. They're all winners, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they have to pick three. I know which three I would pick, but let's see what they do. Oh, contestants. I feel for them. I was reading the application for what you have to do to apply, and if you want to apply, you have to be a UK citizen and apply by uh, February 24th for the 2024 season. And uh, if you sign the contract, oh boy, are you in for some stress. All right, the winner is, or the winners are, there are three of them, and because it can become confusing with so many painters, I thought I would just insert a very quick image so that we can see their self-portrait next to what they did today, just to be reminded. And they're going to go on to episode 10, and as I said earlier, that will be the, a painting of Laura Linney, done in four hours, as well as a different commission given to each one of the artists, where they have, as it turns out from the application, only one day to complete. So there is a time constraint even on the commission when it comes to the competition. Uh, this is the person who is also in the finals, who I said I thought they edited it so that uh, it, would, it showed that she was going to be disqualified because they hardly showed her work and then they chose her. I, I was surprised and disappointed that this was the one that they chose. I'm happy with all of them, but there were, there were a couple that I liked better. And here's the last one, self-portrait as well as what he did today. And I've already showed my hand that I, I love this particular style of painting. So I'm, I'm biased toward that, but I also know that um, there's lots of reasons why I am not a judge of anything because no one wants to go and see <laughs> You know what I would choose? I would only choose paintings I like. And, you know, you need an entertainment, you need a program, you need varied images. And not only in terms of who's painting, but what they're painting. So, yay to everybody. As I said, the absolute final participant will not be 
well, will be named in the next program, and they will be assigned to paint Tom Jones. So it's so exciting when we get to this point. I just, uh, you know, I've said that I, I love and I hate the program, but I really love the program. So remember to keep the white of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I will see you at episode 10, which is our finals. So exciting. Okay, bye-bye.